Exmouth, Western Australia. This picturesque peninsula is alluring to both tourists and locals alike with pristine coral reefs and unique native fauna, especially the dingo. These animals are so intelligent. They're our top order predator. They're the great white shark of the land. As with any wild animal, finding a balance between natural habitat and civilization has its challenges. In this particular area, we believe there's a particular dog that's getting very close and very cheeky to the human population. And Dr Rick is here to help. Our job is to identify that dog, uh, learn all we can about it, and then, if necessary, catch it and uh, hand it over to the authorities. And he has called on a specialist to help complete this operation. Essentially, I'm an ecologist, so my role here is just to complement Rick's veterinarian expertise. It's when he's a great guy to work with. He's a very good shot uh, because we do use a tranquilizer gun. Together, they have the opportunity to shed light on the genetic purity and overall health of the dingo population here in Exmouth. And we're not sure if they are just pure dingoes or, or a wild dog. But to locate and DNA sample one specific dingo in a landscape this vast is a challenge of its own. Trying to coax that animal into our range is going to probably be the hardest thing, and that's what's going to take time. Those sort of trips and take off wind wires, water mixes closed, pins are in, checked. In order to locate this apex predator of the land, Dr. Rick opts for an aerial advantage. On a mission like this, it was great to have the micro light at the moment's notice. We're going to drop down to uh, 100 feet and we're going to see if we can find you a dingo. As much as I know this country, it certainly showed it from a totally different perspective being up in the air. Back in Exmouth, Dr Rick Fenny is high above the land in search of an elusive wild dingo that he needs to sedate and DNA test for genetic purity. From the microlight looking down, we can spy out tracks, their trails, where they're obviously coming down out of the hills. See all these tracks are leading back to the park? Yes. So I, I would imagine they could easily be dingoes. Might have been kangaroo tracks originally, or goat tracks, or human tracks. That's where you find the dogs. The dogs will always, always find the path of least resistance. So it was no doubt in my mind that uh, that's where we needed to be. Ecologist Ed Swinhoe arrives and awaits Dr Rick's report from above. When I see Rick come in, it's a good feeling. He's got a far better view from where he is to actually get a great spot for us to set up a hide. Very exciting. And together, they travel to the location identified in Rick's aerial survey. Pull up about here and have a scout around. That's the goods. Yeah, somewhere here. I think it looks like we, what we saw from the air. Oh, yeah. Dingo poo? Yeah, there's a bit of veg in there. Yeah. Small bone. Definitely dog to me. There's no fish head here, Rick. Oh, yeah, that's a good sight. There's a, there's a track. Hey, hey, Ed, Ed. What do you got? Tracks? Yeah. Tracks, yeah, that's pretty fresh dog tracks. Very fresh. That's a big dog. That's huge, mate. Look at that compared to my head. Mm. And walking down the road, we actually saw tracks. We saw imprints of footprints of dingo, so we, it confirmed what we always thought, that they were coming along there. Hopefully he's around tonight. They don't like going through scrubby stuff, so I reckon they'll come through this bit of a channel here. Yeah, well, we, yeah and, and the road as well. They'll use the road. Yeah, they prefer to, don't they? Dingoes are very, very smart. You know, there's a reason why they're the apex predator here. There's nothing else that's on their level. It's going to be really, really hard for us to actually get it to come in close enough to us that we can get a dart in it. What I want to do, Rick, is um, set up a hide. Like a big tent. And you and I can sit in there and wait for them to come in. How about over there by that big old prickly bush? Yeah, that looks good, mate. It'll hide the hide. <laughs> totally. We've got the rear door here, yeah. and then we've got these um, three faces here. Just what say we roll them up, get inside and see what it looks yeah, like? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, you do feel a bit like a kid, but having a, a big kid like Ed with you, you feel even more safe. So. Oh, it all happens up. 180 degrees, mate. Look west and you look east. Perfect, mate. How's that? 
but Rick and Ed still don't know if the dingo they're looking for is inhabiting this particular area. Set these up to uh, record some video, give us a pretty good indication of when the dogs are most active around here. The trail cam becomes our eyes in the field when we're not there. It can give us to the minute timestamp of when the animals are coming in. We can isolate individuals and we can hopefully pick up our target animal. The hide's erected, you've got 24 hours before you're back on the ground. What happens if the scent that we've introduced scares the animals off? You know, this could be make or break. In Exmouth, Dr Rick Fenny and ecologist Ed Swinhoe are attempting to pinpoint the location of a particular wild dingo. Motion sensing trail cameras have been surveying the landscape all night long. All right, Rick, let's see what we've got, mate. 24 hours later, I've basically had a sleepless night, and now's the time when we find out whether our interactions with the site have scared the dingoes off. Oh, that's just the setup there. If there's nothing on the cards, it's basically back to the drawing board. Dingo. Boom. Oh, shit, it is too. What time? What time is that? Uh, 6.20 p.m. Look at that. There he goes. Doesn't have much hair on the end of his tail. So that's the suspect dog. To say I was over the moon would be an understatement. It's checking out our scent, but isn't scared by the scent. It's really amazing to see that kind of uh, activity. Just no fear. 701. 708. There's no guarantees, especially when you're working with animals, and particularly wild animals. You can't just snap your fingers and say, this will happen. Uh, so it was very, very rewarding to see that they were there. So now we've got to go and prepare the darts. All right, let's go do this. My rule on darts, if you've got one, you got none. If you've got two, you've got one. So we'll make three. With the location of the dingo now evident, Dr Rick and Ed prepare to sedate this wild animal for the purpose of DNA analysis. We're using a tracking dart. It's got a little um, VHF transmitter in the back. Once this goes into the animal and stays in the animal, we can track it. Well, I'm very confident that this will stop a 30 kilo dog. Perfect. This is pretty unique to be able to get a totally wild animal in the wild and get up nice and close to it. If Dr Rick and Ed can successfully sedate the dingo, they'll be able to collect DNA data that could inform the management of this wild animal. I think what we're doing is reasonably new, reasonably unique. In this delicately balanced ecosystem. It's basically all in the name of keeping the wild wild, you know? We've got to restore that balance. Despite their meticulous preparation, the dingo is still a wild animal. The darts are ready. It's time for us to walk into the height. I wanted to minimise the noise uh, so we didn't spook anything off if it was there. So walking in and out of the corner of my eye, I see a bit of movement. There's one, there's one, straight off there. Take the shot, take the shot, Ed. Probably not ideal because I don't think I'm completely ready. You got to stay through there. This could be our only opportunity to get a shot. In Exmouth, Dr. Rick Fenny and Ed Swinhoe are attempting to sedate and DNA sample this specific dingo. You got to stay through there. Probably not ideal, because I don't think I'm completely ready. This could be our only opportunity to get a shot. But the dingo is out of range for Ed's tranquilizer dart gun. I just don't have a clear shot. Get close to it. Hey? Get close. Yeah, it was close, but it's just the wind wasn't in my favour. No. Take our time. Yeah. Calm down. We'll get one when, when they're good and ready. It's probably better to reset gather the gear and head off to the hide. A close encounter with a wild dog that Rick and Ed need to sedate. For Ed, the next encounter needs to be a little closer. I reckon they've come up the road, you know, because we saw those tracks, so I reckon they'll come from left to right. Yeah, I've got a nice clear shot from here. 
Adrenaline's pumping, you know, but you can't make it evident. You can't make any noise to show how excited you are. Of course, in situations like these, there's always a little bit of nervousness and there's no guarantees, especially when you're working with animals and particularly wild animals. As the sun sets, Dr Rick and Ed can do nothing but wait. We've been sitting in the hide, it seems like forever. There's been absolutely no movement until I see one of the birds of prey, a whistling kite, take to the wind. So I've been sitting here in pretty much complete silence for the last 40 minutes. There was a whistling kite um, about 30 metres out that um, took to the wind pretty quickly. Um, they've been spooked. We knew that there must be a dog in the vicinity. Ever so slightly lift my head up and crane my head over the side. And there she was. Oh my God, it's right there. Right there. I think it actually might be that animal from earlier on. Ed identifies the dingo as the animal they need to sedate. But it's walking behind the bushes, we can't get a shot at it. We're losing light and it's my decision to move out of the hide. There he is. Find that other pet. Seems dramatic, but we literally have three minutes of light left. You, you couldn't script it. And then I've got to crawl across the road and find some sort of structure to hide my shape. Fading light, Ed can barely make out the silhouette of the dingo. At this point, I basically stop breathing, but my heart's beating so fast that it's forcing air out of my lungs. <laughs> got it. Got him, you got him. Let him go. Beauty. Dusk. X mouth. Got it. Got him, you got him. Got him. Ecologist got him. Ed Swinho has tranquilised the dingo. It. You got it. So Dr Rick got can it. obtain a DNA sample to determine its genetic purity. With almost seconds of light remaining, the dog steps out from behind a bush and he pings it. You good man. That was very, very rewarding. Relief turns into action stations now. I can grab my radio tracking gear. Ed has successfully administered the sedative into the wild dingo. Because I've introduced the drug into it, I'm responsible for its well-being. So I have to find it as soon as I can. I'm gonna flick this on. There's a magic sound. I follow the bait. It will take up to 10 minutes for the tranquilizer to safely place the dingo in a state of sedation. Until then, the dingo is still moving freely. As soon as that dart went home and the little flashing light went off as it, as it galloped into the distance, I started to relax. Uh, it's been four minutes. Uh, four minutes, so you'll be getting sleepy already. I knew that animal had a good enough dose to go to sleep. All we had to do then was to track it. Been nearly 10 minutes now. He should be asleep under a tree, surely. <laughs> and the moment of truth came when we saw that little, little blue flashing light on the ground, knowing that it was attached to a sleeping dog. Oh my god, that's the one Rick from the video. Yeah. Look at his face. There he is. He's down here. Oh wow. Oh, it's a female. There you go. It's a female, yeah. This dog was actually was just a young uh, female, obviously doing quite well. It was uh, in very good condition. Quite incredible to think this is a, this is a totally wild animal. People should realise that uh, these are not overfed, over pampered, overweight pets, which a lot of pets are becoming. These are wild dogs in the natural state and uh, lean, lean machines. Typical for up here, very rufous kind of coloration on its nape. See how beautiful those teeth are? For two reasons. Number one, she's a young dog. Uh, number two, she's sort of 
eats everything, eats bones and hair and chews everything up so those teeth are being worked all the time. Gums look good too, don't they? Really? Yeah, she's got a nice colour. After a general health assessment, Dr Rick collects vital information in order to shed light on the purity and condition of the dingoes in this ecosystem. The work that we've done here, the data that we've collected, can inform the bigger picture about how to keep these animals pure. We'll try and get a, get a little blood sample. We're on the knife's okay. edge here. It's our opportunity to make a change, and hopefully Rick and I have done so. Same anatomy as uh, a domestic dog. And it's a bit of blood. These dingoes uh, are, are impacting on, on humans, are all humans impacting on dingoes, and it's probably a bit of both. We've got bloods, we've got a skin scrape, we've got DNA. That's what we really want, you know? So hopefully what we've done here, the information that we've gathered, the positive outcome that we've had will go towards prolonging their existence in this ecosystem. So what's next for her? We hand her over to the authorities and wait for the results of the DNA test. We're out of here, mate. Nice well, one. Well done. Good work, Thank once you. again. <laughs> Dingoes are wild dogs, both a native fauna and a declared pest in the state of Western Australia. Dr Rick and Ed Swinhoe are hoping to contribute to the scales of justice and find a balance between civilization and the wild. <laughs>